the world. I am here today to tell you all the things you've been doing wrong with cosplay wigs this entire time. Now I have got a load of cosplay wigs over the past. I think I probably have too many. Over the years I think I've learned a thing or two from collecting them, wearing them, styling them, destroying them. So you can safely trust every single thing I say in this video. So the first thing is something that most of you may know, and that is brushing wigs. Now chances are you probably just get your wig and you brush it like this, and yeah, you're just brushing your wig. I mean, you gotta get those knots out, right? Wrong. I would always recommend you to get a wide toothed comb, or if you can, a wide toothed metal comb. Metal is particularly good for synthetic wigs, as when you tend to brush plastic with plastic it will create friction so just by having the metal there it will just cut out any friction and the comb will just go through it smoothly. Thing number two that you're doing wrong with wigs is you're brushing them from the top down. I mean it does make sense to do this, I mean this is how you would brush your own hair right? Wrong again. You have to remember that wigs and real hair are two different things and even if you're using a real hair wig this same rules still apply. You should always start from the bottom of your wig and then work your way up in opposed from starting at the top of the wig and working your way down. This is because if you start at the top of your wig, if there's any knots or anything, you will just pull it down your wig. So then it will just be this whole huge clumpy mess at the bottom that you probably can't remove and you'll probably need to cut off. And if you imagine like every single time you brush that wig, if you have to cut a chunk off, you're gonna be left with like no wig. So there's really no point in that. The third thing, which is the last thing about brushing is that you're brushing your wig too hard. Like I said before, there is a difference between hair on your head and hair on a wig. A lot of people tend to be rough with their normal hair. I know I am, it's curly and it's thick and it's just really hard to deal with. So you end up just yanking it all around. You'll just know that you can do that because it's on your head and you don't really care. But with a wig, once the fibres come out, that's it. Those fibres aren't going to grow back. It sounds silly and furry because you think, oh, well, obviously I would know that, but if you think every single time you brush your wig, if you're brushing it too hard and you're pulling out those fibres, again you're going to be left with barely no wig. So don't do that ever. And with all that aside though, you can brush your wig and I would only recommend to do that if your wig is short and if it's straight. Now where the wig is straight you're not going to really have to tug at anything but then if you do hit a knot I would switch to a comb. Then again I would only recommend this if you've been dealing with wigs for years and you know what you're doing I wouldn't attempt it on like your first or second or even your third wig just it's really not worth it so that is my advice to you. The fourth thing that you're doing wrong with wigs is the bra strap thing on the inside of it. Now for the love of god, I do not know what this thing is called, so if you do know, let me know. I just like to call it a bra strap, because it looks like a bra strap and that's what it is. Now honestly tell me, how many of you just hook the bra strap like this, put it on your head, and then you're good to go? Yeah, you're not meant to really be doing it like that. You see, by connecting them together like this, you're not really doing anything. You're just kind of, it's like tying a bit of plastic around your head. There's no point, it just doesn't work. The intent of those things is so that the wig fits snugly on your head and tends not to move. If you connect them together, it's just not gonna, there's no point. The real way that you're meant to do it is you're meant to open it up and you'll see all these little hook things on the inside. You're meant to take the bra strap hook thing and hook it around one of them and on the other side hook it around the other. Never ever cross them over because this will just like probably break your wig and yeah, just, just don't do that. You may have to adjust this a few times until it gets to fit snugly. The thing that I would just kind of go by is that if your natural hair is short, then I would put it on like one that's towards the middle. And if like me, your hair is really long, you might want to put it at the end because then that way it would just give your natural hair a lot of room inside the wig. The fifth thing that you're doing wrong is throwing away the packaging. This might sound stupid in theory and don't worry, with my first ever wig I did this. Best not to ever do this because you'll just have a hard time storing it. Most wigs tend to come in like a sealy plastic bag that looks like a really big bag that your mum used to put in your packed lunchbox. You know those kinds of ones. Now the chances are most of you just probably get your wig, get the packaging out, chuck it in the bin and then you think you're good to go. But 
that is not what you should be doing. Always, 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 always keep this sealy bag and it sounds stupid in theory but it actually has a really good purpose. I mean obviously throw it away if you have something better but the good thing about these bags is that when you seal them up no dust can get into the bag so if you think if your wig just doesn't have one of these it will just collect dust it will collect dirt you'll just have to keep on washing it which will probably destroy it but don't forget if you have thrown it away you can just get like an empty shoe box or something and keep it in there instead if that will still keep the dust off or if you have a wig stand you can put it on one of those this will still collect dust so you just have to keep like brushing it off every so often but the good thing about wig stands is that it will keep the wig in shape and it won't like deflate or go weird or fold and have creases you know what i mean i always think wig stands are better for the shorter wigs just because they display them nicer here is my harley quinn wig on her wig stand thing number six is something that most people are gonna probably be like oh well i knew that but trust me if you've never worn wigs before unless you're told you're never going to know so this thing that you're doing wrong is wearing a wig with no wig cap. The majority of wigs that you purchase will come with like a wig cap that looks like this. There's also instructions on the back usually of how to wear them. If you can't find instructions, just Google it and it will be easy enough. But you basically, you tie your hair up, then you put this thing on and it will just like put it in a sack basically is the best way I can describe it. And then when you put your wig on top of that, it will just keep your natural hair from going outside of the wig. A lot of the time when you see pictures of cosplayers and then you can see like dark things like under their under their wig that's usually their natural hair just coming through because they haven't worn a wig cap not only will it keep all your natural hair in but it does make wearing wigs so much more comfortable i did try one time to wear it without a wig cap and it was the worst feeling in the world so i would definitely recommend getting one of these if for whatever reason you can't get hold of one of these i have an easy solution for you what i used to do and i never had a wig cap and this works perfectly well for me so it should work well for you is if you get a old pair of tights and cut off like the leg and cut off the toe of the leg so now you have like a long tube you can still use that because these wig caps are like long hollow tubes this is what it looks like as you can see like i said a long hollow tube so you just basically cut off like the foot of a tight and then that will be your wig cap it would be better if you did this with fishnets tights because you can put like hair clips and those slidey bobby pin things through the holes and just to keep your hair in there more but if you just have normal tights that will still work fine but i would definitely invest in one of these they're only like a pound or even cheaper if you just go on ebay and like search wig cap or go to like a wig shop that's near you you will be able to get these for really really cheap number seven is something that i've also been guilty of in the past and all of you have done it at one point as well and that is you buy the five pound wig on ebay because it's got a top notch quality photo you don't ever do this <laughs> the majority of the time with wigs what you pay for is what you will get so if you spend five pounds on a wig you will get a wig that looks like it was made on a budget of five pounds so it'd be best to avoid all these kinds of sellers if you can a lot of the time they steal photos so that's why if you literally type in like seal cosplay wig you will see like hundreds of the same image just put again and again and then some will have like different sellers watermarks that they've just like put on the top of it to make it look like it's theirs it's not if something looks too good to be true in this world it normally is thing number eight kind of comes under thing number seven and that is lace versus knit what i mean by this is normally with the cheaper quality wigs you will end up with something with a net that looks like this what you really want to look for is something with lace that looks like this normally if your wig has lace in it the seller will make a big point of stating that. They will put photos of it, they will mention it. If you message them, they will definitely tell you it comes with lace. But normally the wigs that don't emphasize this won't come with it. So I would always look for one that comes with lace in a post net. This is because the way it's constructed, it's nicely layered and it's not just like put in randomly. Also with the net ones, you can a lot of the time see the nets like under the, the way it's put on just look at it in a way that lace is a sign of quality so if you buy a wig with lace it will look nicer on your head that was a really long explanation but i hope i made sense thing number nine thing number nine you don't check if the wig is heat resistant now when a lot of people think of heat resistant they think oh i'm never gonna curl my wig don't really need to do that i'm never gonna straighten it don't really need to do that but if you find yourself in a position where your wig has frizzed up 
you're gonna need to straighten it to get all that out. The same with if it's curly, you don't wanna lose those curls and to put them back in, you're probably gonna need to curl it. So it's better that you get one that is heat resistant instead of one that's just like random plastic pieces. If you don't know whether your wig is heat resistant or not, a good way to tell is if you take a small piece of hair, like somewhere from the back maybe, like underneath, maybe the end, you know, somewhere that's not on show and that's kind of on the inside of the wig. If you take that piece of hair and then you take some straighteners, try and straighten it and put it like on the very end so if it does go wrong, you can just cut it off. If your wig is heat resistant, when you straighten it, nothing should happen. It should just probably go straight. If your wig isn't heat resistant, the plastic will just go like that and scrunch together and go once that happens you can just cut off that bit because remember you took it from the inside where it's not going to be on show and then you're just going to have to be really sad because your wig isn't heat resistant the 10th thing on my list is that you're not using hairdressing scissors to cut your wig this is the one that gets me the most because for a wig to come out looking like hair and looking really nice you need to use hairdressing scissors some examples of one you can get is like this there was scissors with this one as well, but they've seemed to have disappeared. So these are the thinning shears. These are really good if you're cutting fringes or if you just want to trim your wig because it won't cut all of it, it will just cut some of it because of these little ridges here. Like I said, this one came with some like normal hairdressing scissors as well. They were literally like two pounds on eBay. They were really not much. They were really good scissors as well, but they weren't amazing. I now have these, which are my favorite things in the entire world. And they are these Galaxy Print hairdressing scissors. They were 15 pounds on eBay. They are really, really good quality. They cut really smoothly. You can adjust the blades on them from here. Like you can tighten them, you can loosen them which I think is really good because on those ones you can't do that and they are just overall really really amazing scissors. The only reason why I'm saying this is because I've noticed that a lot of people use kitchen scissors or paper scissors or any kind of scissor that's not meant for hair. Now when you use this your wig will unfortunately come out not looking as well as it could have done. The scissors make a big difference so I would highly recommend you just investing some hairdressing scissors just for your wigs just even if you don't cut your own hair just get them just for your wigs and just use them when you style your wigs. This is purely because if you use kitchen scissors or if you use paper scissors you're gonna know. They leave big choppy marks and even though it might not be noticeable to you I can definitely notice when people haven't used hairdressing scissors on their wigs and a lot of other people can too. So if you're someone that wants top notch quality banter then invest in a pair of hairdressing scissors and even thinning shears. Most of the hairdressing scissors that you can get come with thinning shears so you'll just get two and they're just really really handy to have. That is the end of my video. If you enjoyed it please give it a big thumbs up. Also if you can I would like as many people as possible in the comments below to comment one thing that they think people are doing wrong with wigs and then one way that they can fix it. This is just so we can all share our knowledge. Maybe I can learn a thing or two because I don't know everything about wigs. I just want to put it out there that if you've done any of these things don't feel bad, like I'm sure most people have at one stage. I know I've done a few of them before as well. No one is born a natural wig expert. People learn things as they get older in life. So unless you're told something, you're never gonna know. So just take it as like a learning experience. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to this channel, and thank you for watching, bye.